Hey, I'm Hannah. And I'm Jordan. And we're Shoestring String Science. Science. And so today we're playing Pokemon. Yeah, we are. Wh why are we playing Pokemon? Because we're going to be ecologists today. In Pokemon. In Pokemon, we're going to be Poke Ecologists. Okay, how in the world are we going to be Poke Ecologists? Okay, so ecologists are scientists who study how living things interact with their environment. All right, and so I'm following you so far, right? Pokemon are digital living things in their environment? So yeah! So if we're in the Pokemon world, they're living things in their environment? Absolutely! So, one thing ecologists do is they measure the biodiversity, the diversity of living things in a certain spot. So biodiversity meaning, like, the number of different things you find in a spot. Absolutely. So, like, the Amazon rainforest, super di biodiverse, really polluted stream, maybe less so. Maybe less so. And that's actually one of the rules of thumb that ecologists use to see if they need to test an area, is if there's very low biodiversity, they go, maybe we should see what chemistry is going on. Well, in the Pokemon world, we have all of our Poke critters around. Mm -hmm. We can be ecologists, we can sample a patch of grass, a stream, or a lake, and figure out how diverse it is. Okay, so we're going to take Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, because that's, mm -hmm. that's the version that I've got, and try and figure out how diverse one of the, the areas is. Absolutely. How? So I think the best way to do it is to go fishing. Well, I mean, no argument here. You know that the way that I play Pokemon is definitely all water all the time. All the time. So <laughs> one really great way that we can go is we can find a lake in the Kanto region, mm -hmm. uh, fish up, let's say about 30 Pokemon, get to statistical Statistic. significance. <laughs> Science loves words like that. I know, they're real tricky because it's like all of the same, what is that, assonance, I guess? Yeah, all, all of that. Just <laughs> tongue twisters everywhere. Uh, so we're going to go find a lake, get 30 Pokemon, and we're going to keep track of how many are, say, Goldeans. Mm -hmm. How many are maybe Magikarps. Oh, I love me some Magikarp. And then maybe we'll see some big predators there, too. Like, like Gyarados? Gyarados. Yes! I hope we do. We'll keep track, and then we will be able to figure out how many different species we have, and maybe we can even do some arithmetic to figure out which species is most abundant. So, we're gonna go collect Pokemon, mm -hmm. use some math, like some an math. ecological equation, mm -hmm. and take that to figure out a, like a community number to get us an estimate of biodiversity. Absolutely! Yeah, let's do it! Okay, so we have gone to Cinnabar because <laughs> no lakes in Kanto. This is what happens when you've got 20 plus years of Pokemon to play with. Yeah, but what Kanto does have is they have lots of coastlines, so we can definitely restrict to immediately around the beaches. Yeah, and we literally just got in the water and ran into a Gyarados, which is my favorite. Alright, so we found one Pokemon, and it was a Gyarados. 29 more left. Oh gosh. Okay, Magikarp. One Magikarp. I'm seeing a bird silhouette as well. It looks like a Pidgey. It does look like a Pidgey from its silhouette. So I'm gonna go with Pidgey. Alright. So that is our seventh Pokemon. I just ran into a tentacle. And another tentacle! Another Magikarp! Of and that's 30. Sweet! So now that we have all of our numbers, what do we do? Well, I converted our hash marks into actual numbers. Sweet! So even just eyeballing it, we can see we have two Gyarados, not counting ours, <laughs> 10 Magikarp, 15 Tentacle, which is not what I expected. I thought that we were going to find way more Magikarp. Three Pidgey and two Pidgeotto. Awesome. So even just looking at it, 
we can confirm that the most abundant Pokemon is tentacle. Is tentacle with fifteen. Yeah, so it's like fifty percent. Fifty percent of the Pokemon we found were tentacles. And then a th I guess what's ten out of thirty, so a third. A third, and a third of them were magic herbs. Yeah. So the vast majority of the Pokemon we found, if we add our three Pidgey, are single stage young Pokemon. Right. Or assuming that our first of all was young. Assuming that the first evolution is young. And then we did have two examples of second stage evolutions. One with the Gyarados and one with the Pidgeotto. Right. So we have five species mm -hmm. with a lot of representation of two of them. So in order to get a really good idea of how biodiverse this area is, we probably want to do a comparison with a couple other areas. All right. But yeah, from my memory of Pokemon, that is decently diverse. So we can we can take all these numbers and go from there to get a community number. Yeah, exactly. And then once we have a community number, that'll give us kind of a place to compare. Yeah. So my thought is, do you want to maybe look at two other ecosystems, do a community number, and then come back? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Perfect. Let's go for that. So we have, we have been at this for a while. Mm -hmm. We've gone through three different coastal ecosystems. Yeah, absolutely. And we caught between 32 and 33 Pokemon in each one. Yeah, we tried really, really hard to catch the same number, but I think we just got overexcited in one of them. It is super fun and it's hard to stop finding Pokemon once you start. So, so we went through all of them and calculated the relative abundance. Yep, and the relative abundance is a easy, uh, it's a scientific way to say that this Pokemon represented a certain percent of the total. So like in our first sample area, Cinnabar Island, we found a bunch of tentacool. When we did the rel relative abundance, we found that 47% of the Pokemon we found were tentacool. Many. So, so many tentacle. And this, this relative abundance was really important, especially since we did not encounter the same number of Pokemon in each ecosystem. We didn't, so percents make it really easy to compare across ecosystems. So we can look at our list now and say that in Cinnabar we caught 47% of them were tentacle, but in Route 21, 18%. And we can directly compare that. Absolutely, and direct comparisons are so important in science. But we actually took this in one step further, right? We did. We wanted to put a number to well, we were looking for how diverse our ecosystems were. So we wanted to put a direct, quantifiable number to it. Science loves numbers. <laughs> so we uh, did some calculations to find something called the Simpsons Diversity Index. And there is, there is this crazy long equation that goes with the Simpsons Diversity Index. Mm -hmm. And I sort of wish I had recorded us calculating it out because it was hilarious. But we, we calculated this out using all of the numbers of all the different Pokemon that we found mm -hmm. and came up with one number for each ecosystem. And we, we looked at Cinnabar Island, we looked at Route 11 and Route 12, we kind of got a little iffy as to where we were, and then also Route 21. And comparing those three things with this diversity index number, mm -hmm. we can say which one is more or less diverse. We actually found that Route 21 was more diverse. The thing about Simpsons Diversity Index is it gives you one number between the numbers of 0 and 1. The closer to 1 you are, the more diverse you are. The closer to 0, the less diverse. So, so kind of to my surprise, none of our numbers were very close to 0. I actually got really worried because um, in two of the ecosystems we only found five Pokemon and I was like, we're in trouble here. Yeah, and even in our most diverse uh, ecosystem, there were only six species. And we think that might have something to do with the way that they're coded. Yeah, probably something to do with the programming because especially with first-gen games, there's only 150 Pokemon to find. If there's only five different species in each area, you can still cover all 150. Of course, this really makes me wonder what Galar is going to look like. Ooh, that would be <laughs> neat. Um, but anyway, so we, we got these numbers between 0 and 1, mm -hmm. and they're, they're all actually above 0.5, so they're, they're all fairly diverse. All fairly diverse. So we said that Route 21 was our most diverse. It actually had a number of 0.84, so really close to 1. Whereas Cinnabar, which was our least diverse, was at 0.69. So even though it's much, much lower, it's still well above 0.5. Yeah, what I thought was really interesting is since Cinnabar and Route 11 and Route 12, they each had five species of Pokemon, they actually had different diversity index numbers. Oh yeah, that was really, really interesting. But we, we kind of thought that Cinnabar was dragged down a bit by the fact that so many of them were tentacle. 
Absolutely. Route 11 definitely had way less tentacle, and it's more evenly spread across species representation. So, yep. using the role of abundance can actually inform our Simpsons diversity index number. Oh, neat. So, is this something that we could maybe use outside of Pokemon? Oh, absolutely! <laughs> you can do this with animals in your backyard. I'd love to put up a bird feeder and just count the number of songbirds that come visit during oh, fun. a certain span of time. Uh, you can also do this with plants. You go into a forested area or even a flower bed and you can count the number of plants that you see. So unlike in Pokemon though, they're not gonna run away and make this a little more difficult? <laughs> no, we don't have to chase down the trees. So that's really, really awesome. And if you'd like to explore a little more about how you can do these calculations in or out of Pokemon, uh, you can check out our link below. We'll, we'll have a, a description of kind of what we did and, and how we went through it. And also, if we get to it, maybe a lesson plan describing how you might use this in, in an informal setting. Yeah. So, it has been super fun being pokey ecologists today. And I'm Hannah. And I'm Jordan. And this is Shoestring Science. Science.